Tech and Finance Minister Johari Abdul Ghani said that developers can still build offices and shopping malls provided they justify their projects to the relevant ministers. To recap, the government had earlier announced a freeze on approvals for shopping malls, offices and condos priced above 1 million ringgit. However, Johari warns that developers should take stock of the existing overhang in office space and malls before embarking on any plans. He was speaking to reporters at the topping up of Manara Prudential at the TRX. Johari said plans for buildings in TRX will be unaffected by the freeze, as the master plan had already been approved. The moratorium is aimed at curbing the property glut in Malaysia in hopes of restoring balance in the market. U.S. Attorney General Jeff Sessions has called the multi-billion scandal involving 1MDB the worst form of kleptocracy. According to Reuters, Sessions said on Monday that the 1MDB-linked assets accounted for nearly half of some 3.5 billion USD in total proceeds seized or restrained by the Department of Justice tied to money laundering offences. Explaining that in total, 1MDB officials allegedly laundered more than 4.5 billion USD in funds through a complex web of opaque transactions and fraudulent shell companies. All done through bank accounts in countries ranging from Switzerland to Singapore to Luxembourg and the US. Session said today that the US DOJ is working to provide justice to the victim of this alleged scheme. To recap, the DOJ has filed several lawsuits to seize more than 1.7 billion USD in assets believed to be stolen from the troubled state fund. Session said that the DOJ's anti-kleptocracy initiative have returned at least 254 million to the people of Italy, Kazakhstan and Peru. Also, millions to the people of Nicaragua, South Korea and Taiwan since 2004. Hibiscus Petroleum announced that it has received unconditional consent from Petronas Charigali to acquire 50% stake in the North Sabah Enhanced Oil Recovery production sharing contract from Royal Dutch for 25 million USD. It has permits for exploration and production development license for multiple oil and gas prospects in the Bay Straits, Australia. Presently, bulk of the group's revenue currently comes from oil produced at its Anasuya cluster producing field in the UK. But for now, the group said it will focus on its North Sabah asset acquisition, which is nearing completion. MD Kenneth Gerard Pereira said it's about allocation of capital, and depending on how North Sabah goes, it will make the necessary announcement accordingly. The Anasuya cluster has helped Hibiscus stay in the black for the last seven consecutive quarters at a time when other oil production companies have underperformed. But Hibiscus is not including a dividend payout agenda in the short term. Chairman Zaino Rahim Mohamed Zain said the group would love to pay its shareholders dividend but only when it can afford it. He thinks the best thing to do is to ensure that the company is healthy and demonstrate growth for the benefit of the shareholders. George Ken had a rosy third quarter with net profit rising 21%. Earnings jumped from 23.74 million to 28.68 million ringgit on the back of local sales of water meters. Revenue meanwhile rose 4% to 127.09 million ringgit as compared to 122.09 million ringgit a year earlier. The group also declared a second interim dividend of 2 cents per share. George Ken chairman Tan Kei Hock said with the consistent performance over the last nine months, bearing unforeseen circumstances, the group is poised for another year of strong performance. He adds that the company will continue to execute on its strong order book of 5.83 billion ringgit to deliver value to its shareholders. It will also continue to look out for new opportunities in both the engineering and metering sectors. What worries Malaysia? According to global market and opinion research specialist Ipsos' recent study, Malaysians are the most concerned about immigration control. This is followed by governance and unemployment. Ipsos Loyalty and Public Affairs Director Arun Menon said the immigration of foreign workers worries households with income below 3,000 ringgit the most, especially Malays and those living in the rural areas. The concern over immigration control is related to unemployment rather than xenophobia. Menon explains that it is those with household income of less than 1,000 ringgit and Gen Zs aged 15 to 24 years that are the most anxious about unemployment. The report said this partly related to foreign workers taking up the jobs as well as facing difficulties landing on the job that fits their aspirations, needs and lifestyle. Finally, middle-class Malaysia is concerned about whether their money was spent in the most efficient manner, both by the public and private sector. The Ipsos study covered a total of 2,027 consumers aged between 15 and 64 years old nationwide. 